Uh, Joe, first of all, congratulations. It's, I cannot think of, a, especially in comedy, a, a, a director, a writer that's, yeah. that's had the kind of success that you've had lately. Just that your films are, are just through the roof. Must be very exciting for you. Uh, yeah, it's kind of terrifying when things go well. It makes you think there's a bus around the corner about to hit you. At yeah, point, yeah, no, right? I'm the same way. I have that same kind of uh, feeling always. That's yeah. why I avoid anything ever going well for me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like, you know, you think you're gonna do well on Conan, but then you have to follow a duck that eats its own <laughs> and then, the, then suddenly it all turns bad. And the career There's collapses. no following that duck. <laughs> no performer. Timberlake won't follow that duck. Uh, <laughs> You, uh, now, I, I, so much to talk about. Uh, you've, you've been very successful. You work with, of course, uh, Seth Rogen, Jonah Hill, and it seems like you work with these guys a lot. You use them a lot. Why yes. do you keep using them? And they're talented, but, but why do you keep going back to them? Well, on one level, I like goofy guys, because yeah. I think they're underdogs. You know, I think people like, you know, people who are struggling in a movie. Like, right. I like, you know, the Bourne identity. I like Matt Damon, but I would like it more if it starred Norm from Cheers, you know? Right. I, mean, <laughs> I mean, that's an exciting yes. movie right yeah, The there. odds are really yeah. against him, yeah. Watching him try a scissor kick, yeah. you know, it would be good. <laughs> but the main reason I use them is just because they're available, you know? They're just... <laughs> they're just home right now. I yeah. Mean, you know, if like, I want to hire Lindsay Lohan, I got to call someone, where's Lindsay? Oh, she's in rehab. Oh, uh, what about Tom Cruise for something? Oh, he's in Germany. What about Seth? He's home right now playing Guitar Hero. <laughs> you know? This is good. You know exactly how to get him. Yeah. And Jonah's right next to him waiting for his turn cleaning like the screen of a bong. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they need cleaning constantly. Yes, yes. Uh, Seth Rogen, of course, you worked with uh, Freaks and Geeks. I did. How I old did. was he at the time? Uh, he was uh, 16 years old 16 years when I old. met him. And it was oh, very weird for me, because I'm like the boss at the show, mm -hmm. and, and he's 16. I, I remember one night I, I said, I should hang out with these kids. I never hang out with them, you know, see what they're up to. So I walked over to Seth and all the actors. I said, what are you guys doing tonight? And Seth goes, well, whatever we were going to do, we ain't going to do it now. <laughs> so, <laughs> tough to cross that line. Yeah, but now you've been with him a long time. You know, yes. It feels like you've, uh, you've followed him, uh, you've taken him through the, this important part of his career. Yeah, no, I'm, uh, you know, I'm very uh, proud of him. We just actually was excited. We heard that President Clinton requested the, uh, the, the video of Knocked Up to watch on a plane to Europe. Is that true? Yeah, like President Clinton requested to watch He, he wanted a up. special, get him a special tape so that he yes. can watch it on a plane to some probably important conference. Yeah, yeah. he's going to be sitting with important people watching like a baby come out of a vagina, you know? So, <laughs> uh, and I know that he relates to every joke in the movie for some reason, you yeah. know? It's, it's reefer and sex and all of that. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, so I'm excited. You know, you know he's, after he watches the movie, he's going to say, is there really a website called Mr. Skin? Can I check that out? <laughs> That'll be the next phone call. Where is that website? Uh, there's a lot of knocked up that uh, a lot of the film draws on some of your own experiences. Yes. And I, 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 I'm guessing a hilarious sequence uh, with the OBGYN where the baby's about to be born yes. and the doctor suddenly is unavailable. And I guess that came from your own life story. Yeah, it did. You know, we, we go to the doctor one day and we say, we think uh, we're having the baby. And he said, no, you're not. And we went home and then, you know, she was clearly having the baby. So we, we called the doctor and uh, he was gone. He was at a bar mitzvah. Uh, he, uh, he jumped a plane the second that we left the office. Right. And so now we're driving to the hospital with no doctor. So we're kind of in a panic. And so we started calling the doctors that we had met with that we didn't like and had to have one of those people come. So now it's people that, that know that you turned them down. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so disgruntled OBGYNs. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, and so this one guy showed up and he just clearly was, was mad because anytime we would ask a question, he would say, you want to be the doctor? <laughs> I can go home. You be the doctor. You decide. <laughs> and the worst part is that he's enormous hands. He had yeah. giant hands. You know, you don't want like a guy, you know, delivering the baby with giant hands. You want a guy with like little American girl baby doll hands, yeah. you know, like little hands. Not like Shrek hands, <laughs> you know. Don't worry, I got it. You be the doctor. You know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Wait a lot of these babies. Uh, now, you've had so much success, but it's always, I think it's important to stress that things have not always gone well. Yes. So, there have been struggling uh, parts, of your, parts of your career where you struggled. Yeah. Uh, there was, uh, I guess you had 
a potential project with the Rolling Stones at one point that never really got off the ground. What happened there? Well, uh, a long time ago, after the Ben Stiller show was canceled, we were hired by the Rolling Stones to write a movie for them, uh, a comedy, as you would expect them to do. <laughs> uh, and it was uh, supposed to be, you know, Ben and another guy. It was supposed to be potentially Brad Pitt uh -huh. following them on, you know, on the road and a little storyline in between the songs in a concert. Film. So there was this crazy, like, three-week time period where Mick Jagger called my house a lot, which was really weird. I mean, I recorded every single phone call with him. Because <laughs> I knew it would fall apart. Right. And uh, I just wanted to know that it happened. And then I would sample things he said. So anytime I made a mistake on my computer, I would hear Mick Jagger. So I hit the wrong button, it would be like, I'm tired. <laughs> 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 or I'd hit another button and be like, that's funny. <laughs> But, uh, uh, but then so you, that's good that you got something out of it, even though this project oh, didn't yeah. happen. Well, Did you ever get a meeting with the other guys in the band? Yeah, yeah. No, it was very exciting because we had to go to Toronto when they were rehearsing and pitch the movie to the band, which is terrifying, like looking at Keith Richards trying to make him laugh. Right. I mean, it's, it's the worst audience on earth. Right, right. Uh, and, and Ben's so confident pitching the movie. He's like, I want it to be edgy and, and, and rough, kind of like Gimme Shelter was. And Keith Richards goes... Yes, but this time, let's do it without the murder. <laughs> <laughs> like the devil, you yeah, know, it was yeah, like, yeah. like being with the devil. And then Ron Wood kept raising his hand going, let's do it, let's do it. <laughs> and then Keith Richards, you can tell, is like annoyed with him. He's like, yeah, are you going to direct Alfred Hitchcock? <laughs> <laughs> They're like an old married couple. Exactly, yeah. Keep quiet and eat your biscuits. <laughs> yeah. uh,